an investigation by the Sunday Times and Channel 4 dispatches, the vast private wealth and hidden income streams of King Charles III and Prince William, the Prince of Wales, have come under scrutiny. The investigation unveils how the monarchy's income, derived from estates, commercial holdings, and even fees on public services, generates millions annually. With minimal transparency and limited tax obligations, the, this financial empire, embedded within the duchies of Lancaster and Cornwall, stretches back to feudal times and continues to enrich the royal family at the expense of the public resources and institutions, raising ethical concerns over the monarchy's role and privileges. This is Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio. Thank you for spending some of your valuable time with us today. So what do you folks think? <laughs> is anyone surprised with this? Is anyone um, completely had their brains blown apart? I I will say, you know, I, it's about time that the UK media starts to do what journalism and journalists should be doing and what the media should really be doing, right? Rather than talking and inventing nonsense stories about the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. This is what journalism is about. Now, I, I'll say I wasn't surprised. I mean, it's great to get details of, of, of it, but I mean, I might be maybe exaggerating here, but I, I'd, I'd come to the conclusion that that whole enterprise is is ran sort of like a mafia, right? It's it's not. There, there's so many any any sort of institution, corporation where there's so many secrets, and you can't disclose this, and they're not willing to disclose that, and so many privileges also are granted. Listen, <laughs> things are going to happen, right? So it's not a big surprise to me at all. Um, so tell me, tell, me, tell me what you folks think in the comment section or um, I'd love to know. So I, 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 I would love if at this time, right, the other reporters and news and all that kind of stuff pick this, this stuff up. It would be interesting to see how they start to report on it, right? Um, whether some will fall into line because even some royalists I've heard um, on some of the podcasts um, call in and, and say, "Look, like I am a royal, I am a royalist, but like you, you, you're charging sixteen, fourteen million dollars to." a charity where you're the patron of that charity, but they're in a building that you own and you're charging them this amount of money while you're pretending like you're, you know, this great um, support or patron of the charity. But anywho's, um, let's, I'll continue here with, 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 with my, um, my um, notes or what I've written here. So the investigation highlights how the Royal Estates comprising over 5,000 properties under the Duchy of Lancaster, that's the one that King Charles um, holds, and the Duchy of Cornwall, that's the one now that William holds, operates as private commercial enterprises, collecting significant revenue from diverse sources. These estates, which span across coastlines, land, and commercial properties, 
include assets acquired as far back as medieval times. Income streams vary from public sector rent, such as those charged to the NHS and the Ministry of Justice, to, um, to fees on everyday institutions like lifeboat stations, local councils, and even wind farms, which must pay royalties to access coastal areas owned by the crown. Now, I don't know if I have this wrong or history is, is messing with, with, with my head, but this is the way it, it worked way back, way back when in medieval times, right? Like these dukes and, 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 and prince and princes and kings and stuff would, would, would own this vast amount of land and the proletariats or the poor people, they, they would give them like a little patch of land that they would, you know, farm on or whatever, but then they would charge them rent and they would charge them this and charge them a whole bunch of stuff in order to exist on that land, even though they were working for at some point for the the owner of the land. So it was like a double thing. I might have part of that incorrect. So let me just let me just move on and not give you incorrect information that I'm trying to retrieve here from my memory bank. So the the duchy's uh, commercial dealings include charging charities like um, Macmillan Cancer Support and Marie Curie high rent despite King Charles serving as patron. So you can imagine this. So I'm, I'm your patron, right? Here comes Antonio, the patron of, I don't know, ABC Green. And I'm like, yeah, ABC Green, blah, 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 blah. And, and the office that you occupy, I own the building and I charge you a gazillion amount of money. <laughs> While I'm going, oh, donate to the charity. Oh man, incredible, incredible. Wow, the, the investigation revealed how even the NHS, so that's the National Health Service, was charged millions over a 15 year period for using a facility leased by the duchy. Moreover, while the duchies report income tax payments, um, they are exempt from corpor corporation and capital gain taxes on their vast holdings for for their enhancing their financial advantage. Isn't that incredible? Man. Now, here is the part that is, you know, it goes to show <laughs> I these people, these people. So so let's talk about the ethical and 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 structural concerns, right? So this level of wealth accumulation by uh, the British monarchy, much of it under the disguise or the, of, of, of private property, raises critical ethical concerns. Despite public perception of the monarchy as financially supported by the sovereign, uh, the sovereign grant, a public funding mechanism, the investigation demonstrates how royal wealth vastly exceeds these contributions. The lack of transparency is exacerbated by selective tax exemptions, which allow the monarchy to operate like a private corporation while evading the regulatory scrutiny that would be applied to similar enterprises. I'm telling you, this, this is a good deal. This is a bag. The NHS will pay the King's Duchy £11 million to rent a warehouse for ambulances. For example, the, NA, um, the army will pay the royals to train on Dartmoor. For example, the Ministry of Justice pays Prince William £1.5 million a year just to use Dartmoor Prison. The King's Duchy charges the Dorset Fire Authority £612,000 to lease its land to put up a new fire station. 
you may be Liverpudlian if you're listening in Liverpool, do you use the Jerry Marsden Ferry Pier there? If you do, then the King's Duchy has charged you and other users £130,000 so far and has even inserted a clause into the lease stating it can charge more if the ferry ever makes a profit. This, lovely listener, you will gather, is the very tip of the iceberg. This financial structure stands in sharp contrast to the principles of public service. For instance, while King Charles publicly supported the NHS during the pandemic, his duchy continued to charge the health service significant fees for leasing ambulance storage space. I, listen, I'm not... I'm not laughing because it's funny. It's just the irony. I, 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 uh. This 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 duality, championing public causes while privately profiting from them, suggests a troubling disconnect between the monarchy's public image and its private dealings. Right? I mean, So now let's let's we'll get into the the, the role of um, feudal feudal um, feudal privilege in modern times. So the investigation points to the um, feudal origins of much of this wealth, with lands originally seized by royal decree centuries ago. That this historical advantage persists today, enabling the monarchy to levy charges on everything from wind farms to lifeboats listen it it highlights a problematic continuity of feudal privilege in the modern era as holders of these lands and assets king charles and prince william enjoy a um enjoy enjoy the benefits of a me medieval legacy while embracing selective aspects of modern business practices to maximize their income. Now, critics argue that such privileges are, are no longer justified, right? Um, particularly, excuse me, sorry, particularly as they impact public services and charities. The inherent conflict of interest in Prince William's campaign <laughs> to address homelessness. For, for, for example, <sighs> look, it's, it's, it's glaring. His estate retains vast wealth that could be mobilized to provide direct housing solutions rather than relying on public sympathy or whatever. It, it's, it's just like, like, come on. The investigation has, has reunited you know, calls for transparency and reform within the monarchy. Both former and current members of the Public Accounts Committee have expressed concerns advocating for Parliament to impose greater financial accountability on the duchies. I mean, especially that there's a Labour government now. Critics contend that if the royal family wishes to operate as a commercial entity, it should be held at the same standards as private corporations, including paying corporation and, 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 and capital gains taxes on income from commercial ventures. Moreover, the lack of transparency regarding how these funds are allocated, whether for personal use or public duty, raises legitimate questions about the monarchy's financial ethics. Come on, people, come on. 
the findings challenge the ethical and social standing of the British monarchy. In an era when the public increasingly demands transparency, accountability, and fairness from its institutions, the continued secrecy surrounding royal finances erodes trust and fuels resentment. But are we at all surprised with this? We're not. Look, they decided to do an investigation on the quote unquote bullying allegations of Meghan Markle. Now, when they, when they did the investigation and found out like, hey, guess what? She's not the one doing the bullying. Oh, well, um, we are not going to show the results because um, you know, it's not, we just want to protect everyone. And it's, it's just, it was just an internal thing. See, we did it. We did it so that we can learn about um, um, what, what went wrong and that this should not happen again. But Megan is a bully. Right? Because I've said this before too, they operate as a corporation. They are a firm and in a firm, if one of your employees, which the royal family basically is, they are the face of the firm, they're the employees of the firm. If one of your employees comes and goes to HR and say, hey, listen, I'm having some, 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 some mental health issues. Hey, listen, I'm having some, some concerns about this and that and some, and they're going to say, oh, no, you can't, you can't, not at all. When one of the things that we stand for is about mental health. So this is a corporation, this is a firm that functions only to feed itself. It doesn't care about anyone else. Oy. It is just fascinating, fascinating. You know, as as it's it's just mind-boggling to me. Look, I understand the queen. She was older, and I, I, I get it. We excuse a lot of things because she was older, right? But she was older, and she would she would continue to do what her advisors told her to do. And let's 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 face it. I've said this before, also, when it comes to whether it's it's advocating for a women's rights, minority rights. Listen, no one is going to give up their seat at the table to voluntarily give it to you. No one is good because they've been on that seat for so long. And this is the same thing here. The same thing here. My, what, I've, what I'm interested in knowing is like what's going to happen next, right? What's going to happen next? You know, as, as, as calls for reforms grow, the monarchy faces a critical choice. Embrace transparency and accountability in its finances or risk further um alienation from a public that 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 now more than ever seeks a monarchy that embodies the values of equity, transparency, and social responsibility. Hey, those royals are really special. I've seen some things, but not saying a bark. Not planning on messing up this cozy life I got here. Okay, let's get business done. I suppose to remind you to click like, it's the thumb up emoji, and subscribe if you haven't done so yet, leave a comment and share. Pretty easy stuff for you humans. I see a nice patch of green grass. Stay calm and conquer. Cassna, ahead of you is in uh, left close traffic outside of then you left down when departure to the west is approved. Traffic outside, outside that traffic, left down when departure to the west is approved. Do you want to identify my plane for crossing? Uh, no, I don't know that's affirmative. Roger, left close traffic is approved. Roger, left close traffic is approved. Whiskey, DC, Cessna, ahead of you is in uh, left close traffic outside of then you left down when departure to the west is approved. Roger, left close traffic outside of then you left down when departure to the west is approved. Do you want to identify my plane for crossing? Uh, no, I don't know that that's affirmative. Left close traffic is approved. Roger, left close traffic is approved. Cabin crew, please prepare the aircraft for landing. Sir Baron and Squadees, we have began our descent into our destination. We will be landing exactly in 10 minutes. Your cabin crew will be picking up any royal trash you would like to dispose of. Baron, on behalf of the crew on this Royal Sussex Flight 001, 
Happy birthday. For Baron, the wise and true, on this day we celebrate you, the voice that guides with wisdom anew. Your words hold strength, your craft shines bright, a steady star, a guiding light. With gratitude deep for all that you share, for each thoughtful word, each moment of care. Happy birthday, Baron. May joy fill your days as you lead forward in countless ways. Thank you for being in all that you do. A master at this craft. Sir Baron, happy birthday and thank you. <laughs>